Welcome back to the channel, friends. As you may know, I love cured, smoked and preserved meats. And sometimes when I desperately crave these delicious charcuterie products, I wish winter would last forever. Crazy, I know. Just because it's hot outside doesn't mean that we cannot cure some nice and delicious meats, right? In today's video, I am excited to share with you a unique recipe for curing and preserving meat using a dryer or a dehydrator, a recipe that can be done by anyone, anytime, and in any season. Before we continue, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Elemental Ashes. In this great online shop, you can find unique, handmade serving boards made out of food-safe reclaimed wood that are perfect for serving pizza and charcuterie boards, picnics, fruit and veggie boards enjoyed on a beautiful autumn day, and at many other friends and family gatherings where aesthetically pleasing and delicious foods are served. At the same time, if you're a photographer or a videographer, then these boards can be a fantastic prop that will make your own art pop and stand out. Thanks again to Elemental Ashes for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to the recipe. These are the ingredients needed for this recipe for preserving meat using a dryer. A 3 kilo piece of pork neck and a head of garlic, peeled and pressed. Then for the rub you'll need 4 tablespoons of rock salt or pickling salt, 1 tablespoon of ground black pepper, 1 tablespoon of sweet smoked paprika, 1 tablespoon of hot smoked paprika, 1 tablespoon of mustard seeds, 1 tablespoon of dried rosemary, 1 tablespoon of ground coriander, 1 tablespoon of dried thyme, 1 tablespoon of dried oregano, and 3 bay leaves. Then the tools you'll need are a food safe electric dryer or dehydrator, a baking tray and some cling film, a sharp knife and a chopping board, and if a baking tray and cling film are unavailable, then a couple of Ziploc bags will do the job. The prep stage is quite simple and we'll start by mixing all the seasoning and spices into a bowl. We are using the smoke variety of the paprikas to get that smokiness into the meat without actually smoking the meat in a smokehouse. It really works, trust me. When it comes to the mustard seeds, we want to crush them lightly into a mortar. If possible, I recommend using whole seeds that you will crush instead of buying the mustard seed powder. This is because all the essential and volatile oils present in the seeds that will actually give this recipe a nice kick are gone from the prepackaged powder variety. After you combine all the ingredients, give them a good mix and set them on the side. Lastly, the meat. As I said, I started with a 3 kilo piece of pork neck, but because of the dimensions of my food dryer, I ended up portioning it into four almost equal parts. Once this is done, coat each piece of meat with the spice blend. As you can see, I'm using the baking tray as my work surface and the container to hold the meat in the fridge for the first stage. Take your time and work all the seasoning into every nook and cranny of the meat, as this will help both with the flavor and the preservation of the finished product. Then do the same thing but with the pressed garlic, and don't worry, the seasoning won't fall off, as it's stuck to the meat like spots on dice. Lastly, crush the bay leaves between your fingers and sprinkle them on the meat pieces. They will add a rich but subtle aroma to the finished product. Now that we are done, clean film the tray and keep it in the fridge or a comparable cold place for 3 to 4 days. As I mentioned in every episode related to meat curing and preservation, weighing each piece of meat at the beginning of the process and having the initial weight written down is super important. For this meat to be safe and shelf stable, it must lose 35% of its initial weight during the curing process. As a quick example, if a piece of raw meat initially weighs 1 kilo or 1000 grams, we need to lose or dry 350 grams of moisture out of it in order to make it safe to eat, meaning that the finished piece of meat should weigh 750 grams or less in order to be ready. So please do this with each piece of meat as it is essential for the success of this recipe and critical for food safety. If you want a more in-depth and comprehensive breakdown of this information about how to incorporate food safety practices in your recipes and ensure that every meat curing project succeeds, then watch these two videos and you'll know everything I know on the topic. After you finish weighing each piece, place them in the food dryer and start the machine. 
I kept my dehydrator at 80 degrees Celsius for the first day, then reduced it to 70 degrees Celsius for the remaining time. In total it took 3 days and 6 hours for my batch to dry and lose the 35% of moisture needed to make it ready. Yours may take longer or less, and this is why having that initial weight is crucial to finishing this recipe with flying colors. While in the dehydrator or dryer, you should check on it once a day and see if it lost the necessary weight. Anyway, time to taste and enjoy this magnificent, quick and easy to make cured pork. Hot and straight out of the dryer, the flavor is super intense and what I would identify as a high-end daily meat. Great for sandwiches and appetizers. But if you're patient and let it cool down properly, maybe even refrigerate it a bit, then and only then you will truly experience the full potential of this meat. You see, this cold version is a joy to slice and place on a charcuterie board or use when making some delicious Saturday night home-baked pizza. Yes, it's amazing and I am so happy and grateful that you decided to join me today for another recipe. If you like what I do and love what you see, please consider supporting me by visiting my wife's Etsy shop called Elemental Ashes and see if anything you see there speaks to your heart. She is a great woodworker who makes unique handmade serving boards from food safe reclaimed wood like the ones you see in my videos and it would mean the world to me if you had a look and saw her work. Thank you very much for your time and interest and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.